severe wind and rain in its wake, destruction, death, and widespread darkness, leaving thousands shell-shocked by a storm New Jersey's governor is calling, worse than Hurricane Irene. Saturday night, the big story in Action News is the enormity of the damage from last night's storms. Tens of thousands of people do not have and may not get electricity again until late next week. South Jersey got the worst of it. Catherine Scott reports from Egg Harbor Township. Neighbors described fierce storms that came out of nowhere. They said their homes were shuddering, their lawn furniture was flying, and you can see some of the damage that still remains. Power outages could stretch for days here, and the cleanup efforts are just beginning. Trees, they just bent like they were paper, and like literally destruction everywhere. Deborah Andros stood in her yard, her Egg Harbor Township home surrounded by debris. Down the line, stretch along Pine Avenue, where a massive tree had snapped after violent storms ripped through Atlanta County. And we have four trees behind us that are wrapped up in the telephone pole, and the electrical box on the pole blew up, made a big bright light like a flame. Over on Winnipeg, the windows were being boarded up. The powerful wind gusts knocked over this tree and blasted clear through the windows of this family's home. On Cherry Avenue, two cars sit in the same driveway, a tree crushing down on both vehicles' hoods. Neighbors describe how the storm came fast and furious. You could see the bolts from the sky to the ground, and then it was just over as fast as it came. It was gone. Cleanup is underway in the neighborhoods, but power outages could last for days. This family invested in a generator last year that's helping to keep their refrigerator running. So last year, when we had like those hurricanes coming in, um, we bought one just in case for the future. It came in handy. Jed and level the hover, crushing the SUV with the weight of an entire tree trunk. You look outside, and it just looked like every tree was going to come down. It looked like somebody was throwing clumps of trees down on the ground. Stuff was just flying everywhere. On the first day of a power outage that could last most of the week, the Salvation Army handed out meals to neighbors who haven't had power since about one in the morning. I heard a big bang and it scared the heck out of me. So I said, the heck with it. You know, I'm not even going to go out and look because it's too dangerous, you know. Governor Chris Christie says the National Guard will bring in fuel, water, and generators to help emergency responders restore power to the area. But the storm knocked over cell towers and emergency communications towers, slowing recovery work. Uh, this was a storm that obviously came upon us very quickly, uh, without a great deal of notice. Uh, and the devastation that was caused is pretty significant. Some families ran generators to keep power going to their homes. For the rest, it'll be a matter of waiting for power crews to restore electricity to the area. Again, the governor has called in the National Guard to help with this emergency as much as possible, but he warns it could be July 4th or later before everyone has power back. And that's assuming no more storms roll through. He says with the heat over the next 48 hours, more storms could come through and do more damage to an already damaged area. In Egg Harbor Township, Orn Lieberman, CBS 3, Eyewitness News. Well, here's a look at some eyewitness cam photos of the damage in Egg Harbor Township. Miriam Hirsch sent us these photos here. As you can see, trees were just snapped in half. And communities all along the White Horse Pike were also hit pretty hard by the storms. We found toppled trees on block after block from Egg Harbor City to Gallo Township, Galloway Township. Many homes and cars were damaged. Rebecca Pasillo was in this Jeep with a friend around 2 o'clock in the morning when a tree crashed down on the vehicle. And some of the trees narrowly missed homes. I was like, tree, tree, and then it fell on the car. You're okay? Yeah. I'm very grateful. I mean, this one thing, you know, destroyed my whole house. You know, that was just done. We are lucky that it just clipped the front of my vehicle, but and my neighbor's vehicle, but mainly no damage. The Egg Harbor City Fire Hall is now open to residents who need a place to stay. Meteorologist Justin Drop joining us now with more on these powerful storms that roll through, and Justin, all of the power outages, even during this excessive heat that we're experiencing. It's, it's pretty tough for lots of folks out there tonight. That's right, Natasha. It really came at a bad time, and actually this phenomenon is known as derecho, which is a long-lived windstorm composed of some severe thunderstorms. Now, we go back to yesterday afternoon, 2, 3 o'clock. It was out towards Chicago, then it just raced across Ohio, 
West Virginia, Western Maryland, and then right around 1 a.m. really impacted Delaware and southern New Jersey. We had reports of winds gusting to around 80 miles per hour in southern New Jersey. That's hurricane force strength winds and also some weak tornado gusts as well when you get them that high. Now, the overall path of this complex was 700 miles. It only took 12 hours to move basically from Chicago to here to the Jersey Shore and millions of people without power and so far 10 deaths. Now, you look at the storm reports, all these blue dots here are wind damage reports. There's over 950 of them, 984, with most of them coming from that duration. It goes all the way back into Chicago. You can see how much damage that system caused. Luckily, tonight looking a whole lot better on live Mega Doppler 3. We are storm free, but still a lot of heat to talk about. That's really the big story through the second half of the weekend. Yes, we're we're right, 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 we're right, right, right there. In the 70s, huh. even some 60s yeah. in Mount Pocono. So it looks like the worst of the heat starting to calm down a little bit. The heat warning will go in effect until 8 p.m. tomorrow. This heat in season <laughs> one, we're right there. coming out at 100 degrees. Also, we'd like to thank our viewers who sent us pictures of the storm damage. Remember, when it's safe to go outside, we always like to see your pictures. You can send them the photos at cbsphilly.com. Natasha. Justin, thank you very much. Storms causing a major headache for travelers as well, trying to take Amtrak between Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. I went to see next hour, and we will have more storms in the forecast in our area tomorrow. Get a little sunshine in the morning. It's quiet. It starts to heat up again. It'll be hotter and a bit more humid tomorrow, and showers and storms likely to be developing in the afternoon and evening. This is after 1 o'clock where they will pop up. Excessive heat warning remains in effect because the humidity is coming back. It seemed a little drier today. That storm last night pulled in some drier air, and it was nice and comfortable this afternoon, even though the temperature was up into the 90s. It's dropped into the 70s now, and the heat index starting off into the 80s. At midnight tonight, dropping briefly before we start to see these triple digits coming back again tomorrow. Same area, seeing that heat and humidity. But more on this coming up in the seven day next. Okay, thanks, Dave. Many people have been snapping pictures of the damage the severe storms caused in communities across the region. Check this out in Atlantic City. A tree was uprooted out of the ground, blocking traffic from getting through on North Ohio Avenue. Here's another incredible picture. This is a trampoline hanging on a power line at Summers Point. In Longport, the historic Church of the Redeemer caught fire during the storms. You can see flames destroy the entire roof. You can send us your pictures, too, or check on our gallery of the photos our viewers have sent. It's all on the homepage at NBC10.com. Well, that's what blew through here last night. And not a single one of these people came to violent. And I think the, that the greatest devastation was right here in my neighborhood. I mean, I have seen storms uh, in the past. I We were, lived through a hurricane, major hurricane in the 60s, uh, or in the 50s, 56 I think it was, Camille, I'm not sure what it was called, but nothing uh, have I uh, seen in uh, in my 68 years, and I uh, have an interview, I, I filmed this, but because of my uh, ineptitude, I haven't been able to splice it together from my camera and show the devastation in the neighborhood. But every, every person in from my house down had at least one, maybe tree bigger than my arms could go around, fall in in their on their property. Uh, took out a trailer house uh, that had uh, 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 this eighty. 85 or 6 year old man living in um, a uh, maybe 16 to 18 inch diameter uh, limb 6 inches or 6 inches at least 6 feet long plunged right through his roof and demolished his toilet at around 2 o'clock in the morning now hopefully I'll be able to get these interviews up because I, I, I shot some film inside his house uh, inside his trailer and there were other other limbs, like six foot limbs, uh, 14 feet in diameter, just sitting, or 14 feet, 14 inches in diameter, just just sitting on his bureau like it was a knickknack. And and uh, other other parts of his home were crushed. And then our, the neighbor right next to me, he uh, he lost uh, at the front end of his entrance to his house, uh, demolished with a tree that I couldn't even begin to get my arms around. And uh, Jimmy. Uh, you've met Jimmy. Everybody's met Jimmy several times. 
uh, I mean, he's he's so quick and so handy with a chainsaw that he just literally worked from uh, sunrise to sunset tonight, today, in one of the hottest days of the year. Uh, you can go uh, any, the first house down the road from me has no electricity, no anything. Now, that person's house is closer to my bamboo place than my house is. So we ran a cord from the bamboo place because it has electricity and running, running water over to his house so because I we have electricity and he doesn't so he could keep his refrigerator going uh, and, but anything past that uh, there's a tree down everybody's yard two or three down some yards some landed on houses one crushed a truck uh, others couldn't even get out of their driveway because there were giant trees behind their vehicles and the, the next road down had two giant trees and I'm uh, when I talk giant trees I'm talking 50, 60, 70 year old oak trees are older that some of them four feet in diameter uh, some of them three and a half feet, two feet giant trees you, you, you'd have trouble I'd have trouble getting my arms around and, and most of which I couldn't uh, all went down and this was the most devastating storm I've ever seen we had uh, one about 15 years ago where me and Jimmy stood in the backyard and just watched Transformers blow up all over violent but that was a that was a, uh, an ice storm and and uh, uh, and that knocked out our electricity and everybody else's and and did take down some trees but I've never seen trees falling like these were and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get some help and put this put the video up that I have in the interview with the guy in the trailer and uh, hopefully uh, this this uh, uh, you know everybody's asking because I, I was on the internet saying it's crazy because I still have cable and we still have electricity and you go 20 feet down the road or 50 feet down the road and nobody's got anything uh, and what these kids <laughs> what these poor kids are going to do as soon as their batteries run down on, on all these uh, devices uh, who knows but there were it was funny because we went to a uh, I got to cut this short. It's over 12 minutes already. Uh, we went to several convenience stores, and those that live in the area know what Wawa stores are. They're tremendous, uh, great convenience stores, and they sell gasoline also. And what happened is everybody did a run on these. There were only a, a several of maybe 10 around town that still had electricity and were still running. And many of these, uh, they were. They, they had people backed up for gas like it was a run on gas. I couldn't believe where everybody was worried about gas filling up their truck. So me and Trey tried to go shopping and of course we couldn't because no, none of the shopping stores were open and uh, ShopRite or any of the really big ones. And so we ended up at a Wawa where there were like circle the wagons, the Indians are coming. Uh, you couldn't even get in the lot because people were, were looking uh, uh, to get gas but the other thing that struck me as really strange was there were lines out the door of people maybe 40 people waiting to get coffee now <laughs> come on <laughs> and i went i said to, to trey i said i gotta get a donut i haven't had a fresh donut in so long i went to the donut thing there wasn't a single donut in it, and then the lady come out she had one tray of donuts and they I jumped on two of them, <laughs> and then everybody else jumped on the rest. But it was, I mean, this is the most devastation I have ever seen in 68 years here. And I did the interview with a guy that's been here over 80 years, and he said he's never seen anything like it. And it might be days before people 100 yards from me have any any kind of, uh, of electric coming into their homes. And it's supposed to be 108, the heat index tomorrow in Vineland, which would shatter all kinds of records. And no one's got air conditioning. They don't even have the option of a little fan. So I'll uh, try to keep you updated. And uh, hopefully uh, uh, you saw it. And, and, and I can't believe that neither one of these channels uh, handled the fact that two kids very young kids, one seven and one two, were in their their separate tent uh, about five miles from here, a place called Parvin State Park, and and they were camping with their parents. And this storm, I said, well, you saw this storm came through in minutes and it knocked over a tree and it killed both of those poor kids. 
So this is a, a this is a storm uh, that that family will never forget, and uh, and uh, nor should we.